Hello everyone, this is Badr al Amir, aka Badr. Welcome to my new video series, Mega Shock Giga Power. This video series will accompany my old blog series, 100 Days of Mega Shock, which aims to review every Neo Geo game released in chronological order. This video series will not replace the blog. Don't expect every game from now on to get reviewed in video form. If a game is important enough, whether cause it's just cool or historically significant, or just presents better in video, or if I feel like it, then it should get the special Mega Shock Giga Power treatment. Today on Mega Shock Giga Power, we'll be looking at Cross Swords, a fantasy theme behind the back view beat'em up. Released on July 25th, 1991 in Japanese arcades on MVS, this is ADK's fourth game on the Neo Geo hardware. Cross Swords is what you get if you take Nintendo's Punch Out particularly the original arcade version, put wireframe Lil Mac in a suit of armor and have it set in a medieval fantasy war, where you fight against monsters terrorizing the countryside with middle ages weaponry and magic. We've seen something similar to Cross Swords on the New Geo already, with the Super Spy. While Cross Swords is not in first person, both games use an up-close detailed view that focuses on one-to-one -one combat rather than fighting multiple enemies at the same time, as is often the case in your usual belt scroll or beat em up. Cross Swords closer simulates fencing, and that means there's more of an emphasis on blocking, dodging, and counter attacking than the Super Spy, or your standard beat em up. In that sense, it's even more like Punch Out. The playfield of Cross Swords is set on different lanes. You are in the closest lane, and you cannot move outwards to further lanes. Enemies spawn or scroll into the screen on one of the lanes. If they're on the far lane, no melee attacks can reach the other, but long range magic spells can. Enemies will sooner or later hop over to your lane, wherein both parties can then engage in physical melee combat. Control in the game goes as follows. The A button does a head level slash. Down plus A does a body level stab. B does a magic spell. Holding up lets you block high head level attacks, while holding down blocks body level attacks. Pressing A and B together does different types of special attacks that consume a small chunk of your health. Neutral A and B does a flurry attack, which does a lot of damage. Up with A and B does a long range Hadouken fireball move. Pressing A and B while getting hit or while blocking an attack or at any other time with down A and B has you doing a burst move that pushes the opponent away to a further lane, giving you some space. Sure it costs a bit of health, but spending half a bar to get out of a combo that would take multiple chunks of your life bar is a good trait rather than risk trying to block subsequent attacks. And blocking falls a crucial part to playing cross sword, especially later on. After a certain point, you start fighting enemies that almost always block your preemptive attack, so the strategy shifts to playing defensively, waiting for them to attack, then either blocking or sidestepping, and then counterattacking. Any blocked attack will almost always leave the other side open for a counterattack so blocking yields a definitive punish, but it requires correctly reacting with a high or low block. Sidestepping on the other hand can make you avoid this 50-50 ordeal, 
but because of the small space, you might not have room to dodge away, and even if you do, you might not be able to sway back in time to punish their rift attack. And if you're late, your attack might then be blocked, and you'd either counter attack. In some cases, you might need to both sidestep and block an attack to survive. For example, this bug monster shoots a very fast stream of fire that's quite hard to react to with the correct block. The stream lasts so long that you cannot completely avoid it with a sidestep, as the fire bug will track you. But what you can do is sidestep to give yourself some time to see if the fire stream is aimed at the head or body level, and then you can block it correctly once the stream aligns with you. This was one of those moments when the game clicked with me and I started to appreciate it way more. Throughout the game, you accumulate gold, which you can use to buy better weapons or life replenishing meat from a merchant who appears in between stages. I assume the better weapons deal more damage, but they also change up the magic, which ranges from long range single target fireballs to the squiggly magic attack that hurts nearby enemies to an all enemy hitting spell to a lightning spell and others. The coolest one though, is a spell that turns the enemy to a vulnerable scarecrow that you can dispatch in a single quick 4 hit combo. Sadly, this spell won't work against some of the bigger bosses. But by far the most useful magic spell is the protective shield spell. It lets you block any attack, leaving the other side open for a guaranteed counterattack, even on bosses. The spell lasts for a long time each use, and you get plenty of stocks to use it. Cross Swords also has RPG style levels. You get experience points from stage points and enemy points, tallied at the end of the stage. Leveling up increases your total life gauge and I assume your attack damage. There's also selectable routes that pop up throughout the game, adding variety to multiple playthroughs. Right here you can choose to either go to the starboard or port side of the ship. Or at the beginning of the game, you can choose one of three routes. Or sometime later, when you are tasked with storming a fortress, and you can choose to either take it head on or infiltrate from the backside. Then there's the sword meter. This meter is linked with your damage output. The fuller it is, the more damage your attacks do. This meter starts out full, flashing when so, but it depletes whenever you do actions like holding the shield to block, or having your attack be blocked or evaded, or if you yourself get hit. The meter then recharges if you're not doing any of these actions. What this all intends is for you to regulate your actions and play in a more cautious manner in order to maximize your damage output. Holding the shield out all the time just to cover one body part from attacks is far from optimal play. You have to conserve and only hold your shield out when an attack is incoming. Slashing wildly won't work in your favor either, even if those slashes could randomly hit weaker enemies. You have to be deliberate in your defense with shield usage and in your offense if you want to survive later levels. And the damage difference between full meter and empty is vast. You can see here how at full meter the standard forehead combo took quite a chunk of damage, while the same combo done with the meter as empty only did about as much as one hit when the meter was full. 
The sword meter is pretty much identical to how the sword meter works in Samurai Shodown 5, and the intention is the same. It's antithetical to how most fighting games and action games reward aggression and being active, and I think that's pretty cool and unique. All this meshes together to make a genuinely fun game. When I first played through Cross Swords, I found that what started out as an enjoyable beat em up turned plodding, tedious, and difficult later on. But once I understood the more nuanced mechanics, it got much better quickly. Learning the signs and tells of enemy attacks to react to with a block, or choosing to avoid the guessing game with a sidestep. Using the A and B burst move after getting hit, or gambling more of your life by trying to block subsequent combo attacks for a more immediate punish. Knowing when to use magic attacks and special A and B attacks, or saving them for later, and managing the sword meter. All of these help build an engaging combat system. that allows for different levels of success after a fight, from barely surviving an encounter to completely decimating the opponent. The former is exciting in a tense way, and the latter exhilarating in a triumphant way, and unlike the Super Spy, Cross Swords feels much more deliberate in its design. Aside from the Neo Geo CD, Cross Swords never got ported to any system for some time. It was imported on contemporary 16-bit consoles like the SNES or Sega Genesis, nor was it ported to the Saturn nor PlayStation, and it didn't appear on any of the various SNK or Neo Geo collections on PS2. The first port since the original was for the Japanese Virtual Console for the Wii in 2011. But it did recently get ported on the ha under the Hamster Arcade Archive series, and is available on PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Cross Swords did get a sequel in 1995 with Cross Swords 2 which was one of the very few Neo Geo CD exclusive games. Cross Swords 2, however, did get ported unofficially to AES slash MVS, thanks to Neobit. This unofficial port does seem to lack the CD soundtrack, which seems to have been replaced with music from the original cartridge game. Thank you so much for watching the first ever episode of Mega Shock Giga Power. I'm hoping this could become a regular series. If you liked what you watched, as expected, please like and subscribe and all that jazz. You can find the blog version of this review of Cross Swords in the link in the description, with all the other posts on 100 Days of Mega Shock. See you all next time.